Ladies and gentlemen, my name's Paul, and in this regular to the Com video, we're going to be discussing memory speeds and their impact on gaming and other applications. It's true that in most instances, CPUs and GPUs get the bulk of most people's attention, and when discussing memory, it's quite common for most folks to just worry about the size of the RAM they have, in other words, is it 8 gigabytes, 16 gigabytes, rather than the speed. So this video aims to examine the impact, and we're going to be discussing this for both Ryzen 7 as well as Cable Lake i5. To illustrate the point, we're going to be using Ballistics Elite DDR4 memory, which was sent to us by Crucial. Full disclosure, we were sent it for free for review purposes, but this is not a sponsored video, so of course that means all opinions are our own. This particular 16GB kit runs at 3000 MHz in stock, but we weren't able to push it much beyond that. We'll go more into that in a moment. The memory timings are 15, 16, 16, 35, which is pretty robust. And as a full disclaimer, there are some problems we had running this memory uh, beyond 2667 MHz on the Ryzen setup. AMD is still releasing BIOS updates for Ryzen, which improve memory compatibility, but we still are able to get a good picture of how memory speeds scale with Ryzen, so it's definitely worth still checking out. Well, all of that said, let's just get right into it, shall we? Before we discuss any correlation of RAM speed and frame rate, let's first of all start out with an examination of the memory kit we're using for testing and the two test rigs in question. Then we can get into the performance of various games to see if there's a tangible difference in FPS. As I said during my intro, the memory is a deep black, with sparse lettering to inform you of the manufacturer, with Ballistic X emblazoned across it, and of course a rear sticker informing you of memory timings, voltage and other standard information. The beefy heat spreaders do their job pretty effectively, and assuming your case has even modest airflow, you'll not have any issues with a kit effectively dispersing heat. Fortunately, the memory feels sturdy, and the metallic textured heat spreader feels sturdy and substantial. I admit, not the most important of details, but it feels like it's a product designed to last. There's various Ballistic Elite kits for sale, and we were sent the 3000 MHz variety. Crucial's online store goes through various details of other kits, including 3200 MHz, which we've included on the screen for your information. One thing you might want to bear in mind is that the RAM is 41mm in height. While it's far from the tallest RAM available on sale, it's not low profile either, and if you're working with a particularly cramped case with an AIO mounted at the top, it's something you might wish to bear in mind. Getting into the specs of the machines themselves, we've used two distinct rigs, the first of which is a KB Lake 7600K running at stock 4200 MHz on an MSI Z270 Pro Carbon and a GTX 1080. The second test rig was a Ryzen 7 1700 running at 3.8 GHz fixed clock speed and an MSI X370X Power Titanium motherboard. All tests were conducted with Windows 10 in games running the same versions. Oh, and of course, a GTX 1080 running at 1080p to eliminate any pesky GPU-bound scenarios. Well, at least as much as possible. 2013's Tomb Raider starts out the benchmarks, and right away it's clear that the action RAM speeds do not necessarily help in all games. Both Intel and AMD have just a few FPS difference between the lowest and highest DRAM speeds. But fear not things do quickly start evolving as other benchmarks play out, with Ashes of the Singularity gaining 7 FPS on CPU bound tests for Ryzen, and similarly large gains were noticeable for Rise of the Tomb Raider, Hitman, and also Arkham Knight, with double digit jumps in frame rates at just 3000 MHz. These results likely confirm what many enthusiasts knew. Especially for owners of 2133 MHz RAM, then you will find investing in faster memory kits can certainly net you additional frames per second. But there's a caveat. If you are on a stricter budget, we suggest buying kits no faster than 3000 MHz, as results do tend to start dropping off, especially on slower CPUs. Instead, we suggest putting those pennies saved towards a faster graphics card or processor.
Ryzen in particular seems bandwidth starved, so we'll definitely be doing a lot more testing with different Ryzen setups, including Ryzen 5s and Ryzen 7s, and faster RAM. This is especially poignant because I guess that 10.06 update will be promising speeds of up to 4000 MHz RAM support, which is rather uh, snappy. The other thing to notice is that this will be most uh, notable on a CPU bound test scenario. In other words, where the GPU is not the limiting factor. There will be times even at high resolution gaming when you're pushing the limits of your GPU that faster RAM clocks will be more beneficial, but this is not always the case. And as I said, if you are on a strict budget, then going over 3000 megahertz RAM is probably not the best use of it. We also want to do more testing focused more on productivity, so do look out for a video on that shortly, and we'll also be testing more with i7s and other Intel-based rigs as well. So now that we've gone through the numbers and seen the results, the evidence speaks for itself. Memory clock speeds do of course matter whether you're gaming or running app other applications. For many folks who have been into PC gaming for quite some time, these results are probably not too startling. But if you're just new to gaming on PC and are looking to build a new platform, then you should probably find some evidence that you might still want to be looking at possibly going for faster memory than what you'd originally budgeted for. Now this even rings true for an i5 ring. Uh, many folks would perhaps associate higher clock speed memory with, let's say, a 7700K or perhaps, you know, um, a high-end uh, X399 platform or something along those lines, but that doesn't necessarily uh, appear to be true. You can certainly get quite a lot of extra mileage from simply upgrading your memory speeds even on a 7600K. And of course, we all know the memory impact on Ryzen. And that brings us to the only issue I have with the Elite Ballistics, and that is, Currently, it doesn't run at maximum speed on Ryzen processors. Now, whether this gets resolved in the future by a BIOS update from AMD, and then of course it gets filtered down to motherboard vendors, that remains to be seen. However, even if you're running at 2667, you can certainly improve the memory timings uh, a lot more, get a lot tighter, and that is something to bear in mind. But other than that, I'm quite a big fan of the memory. Yes, it's missing a lot of the colored LEDs and the you know, flashy neon strips of uh, some of the other memory that you can buy, but I know from a lot of your comments, from whether it was the case reviews we've had or graphics cards or motherboards, a lot of you just simply don't want that stuff. You just want a plain, simple looking memory set that looks nice. Um, it's not intrusive. It doesn't distract from the rest of the rig. And in which case, you know, something like this is absolutely beautiful. We've had absolutely no problems with memory whatsoever. Um, we've tested it in numerous situations, although obviously some of that stuff's off camera, including a Ryzen motherboard that had no BIOS updates. Actually, a couple of Ryzen motherboards that had no BIOS updates, to be accurate. As well as, of course, multiple BIOS updates. A couple of motherboards from NSI, one from Asus, absolutely rock solid. No issues at all, apart from cranking it above the 2667 memory uh, clock speed that I said. And on KBLA, exactly the same deal. 3200 megahertz, not an issue. We actually hit 3300 megahertz um, with overclocking as we discussed earlier in the video. Absolutely no problem. Very nice set of memory. Anyway, with all of that said, hopefully you have enjoyed the video. I'll see you soon. Uh, normal stuff, if you want more, well, you know, content, feel free to click the subscribe button and possibly the like button. Um, that would be greatly appreciated. But with all that said, take care of yourselves. Bye for now.